This question comes from Eric Weissman, who asks, are you worried about Congress playing politics with the raising of the debt ceiling? What would this do to Berkshire Hathaway stock and to the overall economy? You mean if they didn't raise it? If the, they didn't raise yeah, it. Yeah, right. well, it, it would probably uh, be the most asinine, you know, act that Congress, which uh, ever performed. That one time in Indiana, back in the 1890s, I think they passed a bill. I know it was introduced. Uh, you can look it up on a search engine. Uh, they passed a bill to change the value of pi, the mathematical term pi, to an even three, <laughs> because they said it would be easier for the school children to work with. Well, <laughs> that's the only bill I can think of that would give competition <laughs> to a refusal to raise the debt ceiling. I mean, it. It's extraordinary. I mean, it really is extraordinary that with our deficit running, you know, well over $100 billion a month uh, and all kinds of items that can be changed. I mean, there's having a debt ceiling to start with is, is a mistake. I mean, it doesn't, the United States of, of 2011 has a different debt capacity than the the United States of 1911, and we're always, it's going to be a growing country and we're going to have a growing debt capacity. That doesn't mean I think it's a great idea at all to have debt growing as a percentage of GDP, but to stick debt ceilings on so that these games get played and all the time that gets wasted and everything and, and, and the, you know, the amount of the number of silly statements that you hear, and it just, it just it seems such a waste of time for a country that's got a lot of things to do. Uh, but in the end, they won't, in my view, th there's no chance that they uh, don't increase the debt ceiling. And I would love to see them, you know, like, well, I'd love to see them eliminate the idea because it just, it results in these periodic uh, kind of stalemate operations where everybody uses it for posturing purposes and everything of the sort. But uh, it, the United States is not going to have a debt crisis uh, of any kind as long as we keep issuing our notes in our own currency. You know, the, uh, the difference between being able to borrow in your own currency and having to borrow in another currency is night and day. The only thing we have to worry about is the printing press and inflation. And if you're a member of the Euro European Monetary Union, you have to worry about, you can't print money. You can, uh, you can go and get your coal members to try and help you out. But giving up the right to issue debt in your own currency is a huge step, and the United States has not done it. I don't know whether we've ever issued U.S. bonds in any other currency, but we certainly haven't made a habit of it. And the Japanese, incidentally, which have a very high ratio of debt to GDP, also have consistently borrowed in their own currency. And uh, believe me, when it's time to pay somebody back and you have a choice of paying and, and you're forced to pay in somebody else's currency uh, versus paying in your, in your own, uh, it's, it's uh, an entirely different proposition. Matter of fact, Charlie and I, we, we were trying to buy that bank back in... Chicago. Yeah, in Chicago in the late 1960s. And this was a time of really tight money, and tight money was different then than tight money is today. I mean, it, 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 uh, tight money meant no money. And somebody, we wanted to buy this bank, and they wanted, uh, the only place we could find some money, I think, was in Kuwait and Dinars, wasn't it? In Kuwait and Dinars. Yeah. And... I thought to myself, and Charlie concurred, you know, who the hell knew what they were going to say the value of the dinar was when we went to pay it back? <laughs> I mean, it was not something over which we had a lot of control. So we decided not to borrow the money in dinar, so even though I kind of wish we'd bought the bank. But, um, Charlie, have you got anything to say on that? No. <laughs> I do think, I do think, you know, I remember an era when we had a bipartisan foreign policy and all that. And I liked that era. And 
That was the Marshall Plan, and a lot of wonderful, constructive things were done. And uh, they were generous things. Now, now it seems to me that both parties are trying to compete to see who can be the most stupid. <laughs> and they keep topping one another. Yeah. <laughs> You can tell Charlie, as a fellow, has always fi filed an accurate income tax form. 